Welcome to science class. Today we are going to learn about Earth System Science. Earth System Science isn't really a specific discipline like oceanography is. Instead, it's a way of understanding our planet on a deeper level. As we discussed last time, Earth is composed of three physical parts, the geosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere, and then there's also the living biosphere as well. All of these parts, all of them, interact with and cause changes to one another. You cannot truly understand one part of Earth without knowing how it interacts with every other part. Seemingly insignificant or even invisible effects in one part of our planet on one sphere can have massive consequences half the world away or on another sphere. Our goal today is to shine light on how those interactions take place. Let's get started. Let's do some definitions. Once again, this video will be about system science. So what is a system? Well, we can define it as any size group of interacting parts that form a complex whole. So essentially, everything is a system or is part of a system. This phone is a self-contained system. It just needs to be charged every once in a while. I am not a self-contained system. I take in energy from my environment to keep going. Same goes for your car. Systems that don't require energy or matter from external sources are called closed systems. Systems that require a constant input of energy and or matter from external sources are called open systems. Since this is a science class, when we talk about systems, we are talking about the transfer of matter and energy and also the effects that come with that. Now, Earth is an open system and a closed system. Most of the dynamic processes that occur on Earth's surface rely on a constant input of energy, and that energy comes from the sun. The matter is just recycled in countless different ways on our planet. Plants take molecules out of the air and fix them to their living tissues. Organisms die and are broken down and incorporated into the soil and absorbed by plants and eaten by animals that die and it all starts over again. The rock cycle and other natural geologic processes on Earth, along with the effects of weather, are responsible for shaping the landscapes in all of the different environments on Earth. But without a sun, there would be no weather. If the sun disappeared, then Earth would become an entirely closed system. Almost everything would shut down very swiftly on the surface. The weather would completely stop. Therefore, the rain cycle would end and rivers would stop flowing. Erosion would slow down to a rate that could basically be called non-existent. Glaciers could still flow for a while, but eventually, without a new supply of snow at the tops of mountains, the glaciers would flow to level ground and lose all their energy. The surfaces of the oceans would freeze, but deep layers could stay liquid for billions of years. Some things would continue because Earth is also a closed system. For example, plate tectonics would continue. Earthquakes, the shifting of continents, the uplift of land, the widening of ocean basins, all of that would keep going because it is powered by Earth's other source of energy, which is the hot interior of the planet. A combination of intense pressure and radioactive elements keeps the interior of Earth extremely hot, and this heat convects, albeit very slowly. The transfer of this energy produces change. It pushes the lithosphere around, shifting the land masses, creating mountain ranges and volcanoes as well. Life on Earth could also continue for billions of years. Deep below the ocean surface, on the ocean floor, hydrothermal vents pump out superheated water, minerals, and nutrients. Not the kind of nutrients you or I would eat, but extremophile prokaryotes gobble the stuff up. And then they in turn support a larger community of organisms like tube worms and crabs. This water is superheated because of its proximity to Earth's mantle below. Almost all of these closed system interactions take place so slowly that we don't really observe them happening. But we can prove that they have happened in the past which is something we will eventually learn a lot about in this class. But getting back to the main point, Earth is a system because all of its spheres interact with each other and change each other. 
This entire class is the study of those interactions. When we learn about climate, we will talk about how the shape of the land and the direction of ocean currents influences climate. When we talk about agriculture, we will discuss how water and land resources influence it. If we truly want to understand our planet, we have to think of it as an entire body interacting with itself, rather than just focusing on a single thing in a single area. Humans are also part of the Earth system. Human activity impacts the world in a wide variety of ways. We influence the geosphere through mining and the planting of crops, which disturbs the chemical composition of the soil. We interfere with the hydrosphere by building dams and draining lakes and overfishing and pollution. We interfere with the atmosphere mostly through emissions and pollution. All of those things in turn have effects on the biosphere and it affects humans as well as other organisms. Humanity's role and influence in the past, present, and future will be another big topic throughout this entire course. Next time we will officially begin geology by learning about minerals, the building blocks of rocks, and therefore the geosphere. Thanks for watching.